Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a good one. Drinking our coffee, talking about GameStop. So I made this meme this morning because it's like I'll see people say something about GameStop and even if they're kind of um, nuanced about the way they're trying to deride the company, it's usually just like a couple of points, maybe something negative about Ryan Cohen. I don't know, they'll slip something else in there, but this is about it. This is the, this is the short thesis right here. GameStop's revenue is declining. Yep, for now. GameStop has no plan. I would say they do. They basically put it right there at the top of their 10 Qs and 10 Ks if you care to read them. Uh, GameStop only has 4.6 billion. They've actually now gone to like saying that this is bad. It's kind of interesting. It's a great tactic um, as if being flush with more cash than the federal government is a bad thing. And, the, <laughs> and then they're only profitable because of interest. But it's like the company is done a huge turnaround from losing hundreds of millions of dollars a quarter, very concerning, to very small losses each quarter, which are completely offset by interest. So they're steadily gaining money. It's great. And then we wanted to talk about some Pokemon here. So opened a um, Elite Trainer box, and then we just threw all the packs, all the extra packs into a shoe box. And then we opened one pack um, a day after we play. but. So we're not like cracking a whole box all at once or anything like that, but we got the promo, which is this teal mask ogre pond. And they're all right, like not too shabby for a basic Pokemon. But what I thought was kind of nice was we opened the one pack and we got the same guy, but he's just a little foil. And then we also got an Eevee, let's go. We got a, he's just a normal Eevee, but can't go wrong with an Eevee and a Leafeon. So Eevee turns into like Leafeon, Sylveon, Flareon. That's why I like Eevee the best. Turns into all kinds of different Pokemons and they're adorable. So opened that pack, I was like, all right, that's a pretty decent pack. Got like none of the pulls are worth anything, but it's not really about what they're worth to me. So uh, yeah, and then let's go ahead and talk about GameStop. So in the pre-market here, what are we doing? We're up two cents. We had a bad day yesterday, down a couple of percent overall market sold off gigantic. Uh, it looks like the China market is collapsing. We've been kind of on this downtrend ever since blipping up strongly. This was the um, share offering. Blipped up strongly on the 20th out of there on enormous volume, like 62 million volume you can see back there. Lots of potential buy action happening. Hit like 22 or $23 then it had been coming down again in a pretty classic like straight run down. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what to make of it anymore. But anyway, let's look at what the total market's doing in the pre-market up a bit. Look at some of the other ones, kind of flat. XRT doing really interesting things. We're gonna talk about XRT. It had big volume, uh, what was it? Yeah, uh, the fourth, so Friday. Huge volume, 9.2 million volume. Like. It occasionally has big volume, usually when GameStop runs up though. Like you can see back here, when GameStop's had its big, big moves on May 14th, look at the volume on XRT, 28 million volume. Are you joking me? And then on the 6th and 7th, big volume, 8 million and then 12 million. So it does things when GameStop does things. Very interesting. Back here, 9 million volume on May 1st. It's clearly used to manipulate GameStop to a tremendous degree, always has been. And then, so we've got our chart here and our triangle, made the lines bigger and pinker. And we're cruising down into the triangle of, what I call it? The wedge of dreams. So we'll see when this thing ends, but the next Fed meeting is like right out here. So we'll see what happens. Wanted to talk about here a couple of data points. So we can see someone sent me a message. They said, hey, if the 20th was some kind of huge buy-in happening with gigantic volume that day, look for a melt-up to maybe start um, on the 8th here and maybe cruise through like leading up into late October, maybe near National Cat Day. They're saying that's essentially what happened when Roaring Kitty bought in on June 13th. Big buy-in happened, 4 million shares. Melt-up began concluding about 35 calendar days out on in the middle of July. So we could see something like that. I've just got it indicated there on the chart. And then I've got the Fed's meeting on the chart happening shortly after that. So the next Fed 
meeting is going to happen on November 7th, right after the election. So this is an exciting month to come here. I'm, you know, there's all these events happening, macro econ right here, macro political here with the elections, National Cat Day. This is um, DFE's nom de plume, like his other Reddit account posts every year on this day. And we did have a cycle happen two years ago on Halloween. So worth mentioning. But uh, perhaps most importantly of all, GameStop's Q3 ends on October 31st. So we've just got how many trading days here? We've got about three and a half weeks until the end of Q3. I'm just, you know, kind of, what you gotta do is just buckle down. And, you know, as I was doing from here to here to, he oops, um, how do I close that? Uh, to here to here, just watching the stock get pounded down for no reason. It's like, yeah, all of a sudden retail was just like, you know, we went through all this. I'm gonna sell as the company becomes increasingly healthy. Makes no sense. And then explode out of here and then the same thing's happening, right? And companies getting healthier and healthier. First Q2 profitability in a lifetime. And then we're coming up on a Q3 hopefully post a profit again, and I'm gonna to decide to sell after all, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, we just have to buckle up. You're like, I've already been buckled up. <laughs> so, and we'll see what happens as we cruise along here. So other things worth mentioning here, long volume came in decently, like 53% long volume yesterday with the price getting crushed down. Um, ETFs are doing weird things, so here is something worth mentioning. You can see that during 2020 and 2021, I had shown XRT had hit like a high back here and it deviated strongly in terms of creation from the overall market, um, the overall small caps. So there was great, during 2021, creation of XRT, you can see it in green here in the background and the price of XRT was very high. So was it dragged up by GameStop? Was it a containment strategy for GameStop? It then went on reg show, like immediately to end that year and then all through the next year for a full year. So right now, games, or, uh, XRT hit a low of units outstanding of no, 3.7 million shares on Friday. And then yesterday blipped up to 7.1 million shares. So it doubled the number of outstanding shares in one day. What's up with that? Off of that big volume on Friday. So it lags. So really it was Friday. For some reason, someone ordered creation of an incredible number of units of XRT on Friday. Why? Um, does And it, does it have to be GameStop related? I mean, most things are GameStop related in one way or another, but what's going on here? And so everything's creating now. Went through kind of a low here on ETFs. They were redeeming them. And now everything's creating. Should that produce demand on GameStop? Theoretically, we're down in the pre-market. Uh, what's going on? Why am I looking at XRT here? Go over to GameStop. Oh no, we're up in the pre-market. So is GameStop gonna launch? I don't know. It, it can't really launch too far without breaking out of the, the triangle here. So we'll see. Is the triangle gonna break early or is it gonna go near the end? The last one, I don't know how far it went into the into the very end of the triangle. This triangle has been lasting for just about five months now. Yeah, five month old triangle. So this is like a baby triangle, honestly. The other triangle lasted like three years. So We'll see, that's what I'm looking at at the moment. You can see, this is worth looking at. I didn't realize that you could just click on this part right here and change the shares available. So I've been talking about how the shares available to borrow is dropping way down, which is so interesting because there were 4 million available, um, which is a ton of shares available to borrow up until whatever happened on September 20th. So someone bought all the shares. And that was on OPEX, on quad witching, pushed options into the money, probably demanded delivery of shares that were being hedged 
with lent shares, not owned shares, right? So market makers were probably naked again. Someone came in and said, oh, give me all those shares. Now the lend pool is dry, fairly so. And I didn't realize you could just click the little drop down here and look at the weekly, super helpful actually, because check this out. You can see this was going into the end of the last year, had a big run up at the end, very end of tail end of November, beginning of December before earnings. No news, 60 something million volume. Um, was it an OPEX? It was not December OPEX yet. Uh, but you can see big lend pool up until that point depleted. So someone borrowed um, to hedge and someone demanded delivery of a ton of shares. And then the lend pool was empty all the way until May, end of April really when it was completely empty. And actually it was basically completely empty going into the March earnings call, which was a good earnings call. Stock began to launch and then was abruptly jammed super hard down to $10. So let me go back to the graph so people can see what I'm talking about here. So essentially we're looking at big lend pool available back here. Huge volume comes in, 60 some odd million volume. All the shares in the lend pool are suddenly gone. They're gone all the way to this earnings call here, pretty decent volume, and the stock begins to run. This is when Chewy and GameStock strongly diverged. They were channeling with each other all through this period, like lockstep, and then Chewy goes up, GameStop goes down here, Lend pool is gone. Look at this, no shares available to borrow for GameStop, and cost to borrow begins moving up. You can see cost to borrow moved up here, cost to borrow moved up here, and this is when all the events of May and June happen is off of having no volume. And with the share offerings, shares become available again, but now they're all gone again after September 20th, quad witching options and so forth. So what happened? And is this, I mean, to me, this is the most, like as long as there's shares available to borrow, I'm not getting excited at all, especially millions of shares, because that just gives them incredible flexibility to, to walk the stock down to do like where they jam it down then immediately buy back the shares jam it down buy back the shares now it's like their ammunition is is gone price is very low if any big buyers come in and decide this is an attractive point to buy gamestop how are they going to get those people those shares they're going to have to internalize those orders they're going to have to naked short the thing and their you know obligation pile is just going to expand we can see here we're slightly below max pain. This is short volume. Haven't seen any interesting stock exchange happenings yet of interest. Let's see how many days out we are from like something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, yeah, that nine day thing on the New York Stock Exchange doesn't really seem to be doing anything anymore because yesterday would have been one, two, three. Yesterday would have been nine days out when the price went down, not up from like this big volume. And we had this big volume here on, that was the 20th actually, kind of interesting. Um, what else is worth mentioning? Talked about how XRT had sudden, very strong creation that should demand GameStop, but GameStop's going down. So are they just failing XRT? Probably. This will cause the short percent on XRT to drop off dramatically, but it's really just because the shares sold short haven't really changed. The outstanding just doubled. And then let's go ahead. I've not looked at um, Roaring Kitty's charts at all since like yesterday or something like that. So we're leaning towards the oversold side on RSI. You can see we're trending down right here in the short term. Uh, when are we gonna break out? How low are they gonna get it? Are they gonna be able to get it into, did they get it into the 19s yesterday? I don't think they did, right? I, to be honest, I was working on something else. I wasn't. No, twenty eighty one was the lowest. Um, are they gonna Are they gonna go for a new low without a share offering happening? Be interesting. The RSI is not as oversold as when the share offering started. That wasn't that long ago, just a month or so ago. And then down here, leaning on the oversold side, leaning on the or on our midline. Don't want to see us cross below this midline. The support on RSI on the weekly and the monthly has been like holding up really strongly since the events of May. We'll see if it can continue to maintain. 
And then down here at the bottom, ACT still in the orange, definitely uncrossed our exponential trigger here. So uncrossed, uncrossed, still crossed, but not looking too hot here. And then down here, we're not crossed. Right here, we're like right on line. So it's everything's getting like compressed though. Closer and closer and closer. You can just see the triangle, downward sloping though. Um, and then we'll look at utilization. Still very low, honestly, considering we were locked in. People were so excited. I was so excited. We were at 100% utilization for an incredible length of time back here in 2022. And then they just dumped the price off a cliff and utilization went down at the same time. It's like, yeah, that's a big giant swap right there. They were like, oh, GameStop's profitable. Insiders buying like crazy. This was in June of 2023. And they were just like, yeah, just swap it. Huge swap, bam. Another big swap back here because GameStop started to rise up again. Bam, and you can see cost of borrow dropping even though price is dropping, seems obvious. And then here we go, cost of borrow in the background. Started to run up with that December move and they were probably just like, you know what? Do another swap, boom. Um, so I'm just guessing more time, more pressure. Some really big institutions have really big negative holdings on GameStop. They're trying to tell me to sell. Um, but I don't think so. And then uh, let's go ahead and look at the IV data. So IV is steadily dropping. We should see it begin to pick up a couple of weeks out from earnings. So we could probably put that on here. So our earnings call is gonna be, I put it on here, December 4th, which means we should see IV pick up in the middle of like somewhere around here after Botox day. <laughs> IV should pick up. All right, so that's all our data points of interest. I think I covered everything. Really looking forward to a big Q3 though. Wanna see GameStop. Um, oh, worth mentioning would be this. Uh, back in the day, I was extremely hyped for seeing four consecutive quarters of GameStop being profitable we could get that in two months because yeah, it's just two months away uh q4 at the end of uh 2023 was profitable and then q1 of this year was not but then q2 was so we're already net positive on the last three quarters so as long as we don't have a super terrible q3 We'll have a year of profitability. That's one of the metrics for which to join S&P 500, to have a year of profitability and the most recent quarter being profitable. So at this point right here in December, assuming all goes well, we'll have every criteria met to be in the S&P 500, except for market cap. So market cap needs to go up. We're currently at a market cap of 9.5 million we need to go up about five billion or six billion on market cap which could happen and it's like 33 dollars a share gamestop's um market cap moves around pretty strongly so we need to get to where let's see on the graph here uh, yeah that's a ways away it's like up here where it was when it was peaking in june and may but uh like 15 some odd billion in market cap so we got to move up to here but all the other metrics being met is really good. It's, I mean, when was the last time that could be said about GameStop? Long time, four consecutive quarters of, uh, or four quarters in total with, with profit overall. That has, that's another like 2017 era type thing. Um, couple posts just to talk about really quick here. Go through these guys. <laughs> Someone fixed this meme. <laughs> A lot of business it's like isn't this the truth like GameStop's just running ahead getting further and further like there's no stop in this train I don't know what they're even it's, they're they're delusional at this point to try to stop GameStop but they're gonna keep trying which shows me the harder they fight like game like the the idea that it just is gonna like run down for the last like several months and, and especially like what it's been doing recently is, is like so telling to me. I'm like, man, their position must be bad if they're willing to keep fighting this hard on it. 
um, especially against a company that zoom in on this um, has things happening for it you know like little things little things here and there but this is an established company so it's not like they have to come out and like gobble up a huge market share as the uh, Kurt Wolf said in his interview GameStop's good, got a decent moat like where else do you go for, for gaming and stuff like that and collectibles uh, there's other places but like not like it's not the same thing as GameStop so it's got a, a decent moat um, it's got a fanatical fan base and now they're intersecting with um, with PSA here and they're going to give you a deal so I feel like $16 is expensive like if I send 10 cards in like I should get a discount but I don't know I don't know what the um, overhead is it seems like look up a card make sure it's legit um, wrap it in plastic send it back to a person is that worth $16 I don't know um, so this is a good deal though GameStop's expanding or foraying into um, PC, uh, PSA grading and if you can get a better deal as a pro than you can being a PSA member I think that's wonderful like keep the synergy going so soft launch should start today if we can trust a bro here and you got to trust you, gotta, you just got to trust and then we got here um, I'm a big fan of the candy con controllers you can actually see the one like right behind me here um, and then they've got this one that's essentially the same thing, but you put your phone in it, the Raptor 8. I gotta say, Atrix and GameStop branded electronics are very good. In fact, like most things I'm using, this mouse I'm using, all my accessories are GameStop Atrix brand. So great job, GameStop, on the new thing. And then one of their project leads here, Beely, is uh, asking or talking to the community about, um, well, they're talking about the Raptor 8. So he posted about it and he led the launch of this project. Great job, I say, keep it up, love what you're doing. Um, and this person's saying, hey, could you make a mouse that competes with the 502? I would agree, I bought like six of these 502s from GameStop. I've got like one at work, one here, all my stuff at home has like one sitting to the side um, when it needs to be plugged in or whatever. Got one in my work bag. Uh, but if they made a GameStop mouse that was like as nice and friendly as the 502, I would use it like crazy. So they're basically saying if it gets a thousand likes, um, then they'll we'll look into into making it. It only did they get a thousand likes? It didn't even get close to a thousand likes. All right, so we're gonna post this in the description. If you care, go ahead and go like his thing here. Uh, and then I got a shout out, no sorry, Bob. Continuing to buy Pokemon, bought the Ivysaur here, Mint 10, amazing. There's, there's like no Pokemon on the site right now. I had mentioned um, the this guy, and they continue to go up in price. Yeah, like look at this. Moving, ooh, this one's still, but like they've moved up like $100 in just a few days. There's some other Pikachus here, very nice. Um, these were not on here yesterday. In fact, the only ones that were on there when I checked last was just like three of these. So inventory is just moving super quick. It'd be neat if somebody was tracking all the inventory. Um, super cool. And then I liked that their GameStop social media guy is continuing to talk to this issue it seems to be like one of his main missions is um talking to the fact that you don't own something unless you've got the physical thing in front of you honestly with and i realized this long ago i used to have amazon prime and i bought like three movies on there and immediately i was like this is a scam because i canceled my um amazon prime and then i lost access to all my movies and i was like why would I build a library of movies that number one I have to stream which is like what if my internet's down what if it's like you know internet or whatever goes down I just want to hang out with my family watch a movie I can't even do that I can't even take them out like camping or something or I don't know on a little portable movie player like we used to do as kids and, and watch a movie with like what like what is going on in this world where like things are less um, good than before because Corporations just want to take control and take profit on literally everything. It's like, no, give me a physical disc. 
Um, like I wish I still had my discs for Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy Tactics and all the, all those things. And I'm not buying digital anymore. I, I refuse to um, on principle. And I don't even have any services. I have no streaming services, none of that. Um, I just, I can't participate in a system that just wants to extract all value from me as a consumer and doesn't respect me. Basically, the only thing they respect is making money. It's a joke. And I just want to own the things um, that I buy because it's my money that I'm exchanging to you and I'm not signing up for a subscription ever again. It's just, I, I want no part of it. So I love that GameStop's um, harping about this. Good job, GameStop. Bring awareness to this issue. It's a terribly important issue. And unfortunately, you've got a big group here in the middle. I love the face too. It's just like, this is literally them. They'll, they'll tell you all the reasons why you're wrong. And they think that they're like the smartest, uh, most sensible person in the room to tell you why no, that era of physical gaming was the worst. You're looking at it with rose colored colored glasses, all this different stuff. And it's like, imagine buying a car or imagine just leasing a, a car, right? That's what you're doing. You're leasing, a, you're, you don't own it. Like your entire Steam library, you don't own any of those things. They're not yours. There's no value there. All they did was took the three or four or five dollars that they could have given to you as a customer to give you the disc, extracted that from you and made you download a game that was like 700 gigabytes and you might as well have just gone and bought it like on a disc, I don't know, and had the disc forever. I just, the whole thing to me, I saw it coming. I've seen it just happening steadily and steadily and steadily and I'm just, I don't know, it bothers me so much. What companies think is a good idea. Like I saw one recently, someone I think posted on Super Song, where like even a mouse, they wanna make your, your peripheral to your computer, your mouse, a subscription service. So they can like give you upgrades and increase features. How about I just buy a mouse and it's a quality product and it just works. Why does everything have to be a subscription? It's just, no, I'm not cool with it. So like at this point in time, I have like zero subscription services to anything. I don't have Amazon Prime. I don't have any of that stuff because it's just a hard no for me to participate in this uh, financial world where everything is an extraction. Well, uh, I have GameStop Pros. That's a subscription service. And I, I got Costco. Um, but, you know, those are wholesale clubs or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, love this post too. This, you know, there, there's a, there's, there's this um, sentiment amongst the community. You can see it. It underpins the community of frustration. It's been a long time. Right, long, long saga. This, <laughs> this is just the last five months. You know, here's the last four years. So people, I've mentioned it before, people that have been around since the beginning times, 2020, 2021, um, people that jumped in later, there's some that are Zen. There's some that are still super engaged, accumulating, super excited. Um, there's some that are looking for a chance to get out as soon as possible, they're frustrated. And then I'd say there's probably a huge group of people that got in just with all the events of this year, or maybe shortly before or shortly after, and they're, they're becoming frustrated. And I would just say, you know, like this wasn't that long ago. Like this was bef like, I don't know, five months ago, four and a half months ago, stock price ran to 80 and they'll never talk about it, right? They'll never talk about this run, this run, this run. They'll never talk about when it randomly ran up to 35 on for no reason on Halloween. Any of the events back here in the summer of 2022, or this, this one was amazing, this launch from like below 20 bucks all the way up to 50 bucks, like no news, no, you know. So like it was at 300 and something odd dollars, $350 just a couple months later. They'll never talk about these things. Uh, but they all encourage me greatly to just zoom out, look at the graph, be like, how do you explain that? Uh, hundreds of millions of volume, right? Sure, it was household. No. Um, so that just happened. Who was moving their derivatives around? And then we got Dr. T here um, talking about other countries still um, cracking down on short selling. Love to see it. And I did want to talk about this. Um, someone posted on Reddit GME. They're confused about the whole emoji timeline thing. And they're saying, 
Um, what makes people think it's playing out in real time and isn't just telling a story? It's both. So to tell, to tell it as clearly as possible, Roaring Kitty came back in May of this year, probably in late April, started buying calls, stock exploded up to 80. Uh, upon Monday, when it had really started to launch, not yet at 80, he started putting out these memes on Twitter. We didn't know he was back in the GameStop at the time, but the one with the emojis is, emojis, right here. 35 emojis, yeah, so it was um, meme number 40. It was posted on, which day was that? On Wednesday. So there's what, the Missy Elliott video, all these emojis stream across the screen. And they start off with this one. This is in the long ago past, three and a half years ago. This is a, a Ryan Cohen emoji, I believe. So they were like various emojis in sequence by Ryan Cohen over the period of months on his Twitter account. But then they started getting into ones that Ryan Cohen hadn't yet done. But, you know, this is clearly like camping out. It's a kitty smirking, hits the target. Everyone thought that's probably the events of oops, this year. Why would it not be? And then this is clearly the events of this year with the Chewy dog, because he literally posted this on Twitter to confirm that we're here, right? And then, so now we're waiting on have any of these ones happened the last five. So maybe that's a, a quick summary that would explain that, but it's pretty obvious. It is a history, but it is modern times too. And it is looking ahead because the, um, the dog one had not existed and then happened. So the dog one was like confirmation of the thing here. And then what is this about? Oh, someone's basically saying uh, DFE might have bought about 10 million shares on September 20th. I would say maybe. We don't know who the big buyer was on September 20th, but seems important. Uh, we had huge buys, um, huge volume came in. Let's see here. And that wasn't that long ago, just a couple of weeks ago. Stock price, I mean, didn't move all that much though. If a similar event happened back in on November 29th of last year, you can see it's almost the exact same amount of volume. The price moved up $6, five or $6. Um, well, I guess that day, hmm, from the low to the high, it really only moved up three. So actually very similar. So it moved up $3 back then, really only moved up on this gigantic volume, two and a half dollars. Very similar event, I would say. Um, but back then, what did it do? Sorry, I'm going on a tangent here for a second. Um, it did move all the way into earnings down, then move start to back up, but then move down and the the blipped up here. So reached like a relative high, how long after this? A month later. So are we a month out yet? Where's that? So this would be September 20th. A month out would be I've got a little, I actually just have it here anyway. So could we just like blip around for a bit and then hit back maybe to like $23 or so out here and kind of follow the pattern of what happened back in November and December, maybe. Very similar, it's like same amount of volume, very similar move up. We're blipping around, um, had a little blip here we see something like that there and then then try to push it down further into the triangle and then we'll see what happens out here in early november so anyway you guys that's what i'm looking at right now that's all the thoughts in my mind about gamestop um i'm gonna ramble for a bit but i hope you're having a good one and we'll see what happens next always super excited you literally never know i haven't even been looking at it let's go look at what's going on with gamestop I'm doing nothing in the pre-market um so we could drop down to a deeper low we could rip on a thousand million volume, you literally, or we just trade sideways. We'll have to wait and see. So have a good one and I'll see you in the next one.